mouth feel. Sometimes you put something out into the universe and it comes back to you in a very prolifically profound, beautiful way. That was my bourbon journey experience today, folks, as I picked up a bottle that I've been on the lookout for for the last couple of weeks, one that I was really excited to get my hands on, one that I knew I would buy as soon as I saw it, probably regardless of price, because I'm such a big Maker's Mark fan. That bottle and what I'm doing with a rapid review today is Maker's Mark F. AE02 stave profile. So this is their second of their annual limited limit uh, second of their limited edition releases that come out annually. I guess it could be an annual release and come out twice, semi-annual release. So basically Maker's Mark, which you guys, if you follow the show, know that we love Maker's Mark, their stave profile store picks that they do, uh, their cast strength, I'm a big fan of. Maker's 46 cast strength and everything at their price point is really good, right? So uh, what they've done the last couple of years is do limited releases of different type of stave profiles. This one specifically, and we've done a review on the FAE-01. It was good. Uh, I liked it, I think probably more than TJ and Ben did. I'm not sure if Ben joined us for that review. I think he was sick then, but we reviewed it. TJ and I liked it. I think I was closer to loving it, uh, but they both thought it was a little bit heavy and, and dense and oily and uh, I think tobacco forward for them. A little bit not in their flavor profile. I really liked it. FAE02 is their second one of the of the year, second release, and it is described as a texture forward expression. That means it's going to have exquisite mouth feel. Mouth feel. This has exquisite mouth feel. And let's see. It's got rich notes of toasted oak and a rich creamy finish. Hmm. I'm gonna have a better time opening this bottle than I did the Jack Daniels. Oh yeah, look at nice and easy. Thank you, Maker's Mark. Love you. Let's get the quarter pop ready. Oh, that's, that was anticlimactic. And uh, maybe I'm gonna have a harder time with it. Uh, all right, let's go. So Maker's Mark is typically going to be go, 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 uh, a very bready uh sweet uh, we get a lot of maple syrup flavors with their different profiles and uh, so very dessert forward uh, with a lot of bready and sweet notes this is proofed at 109.1 no age statement which is typical for maker's mark I'm trying to say there's any more pertinent information to share with you guys as i open this up on the bottle let's see it's round creamy and mouth coating mouth feel gonna be a lot of mouth feels in this episode. This has exquisite mouthfeel. Tons of vanilla and orchard fruit. So very uh, apple and even a little bit of cherry, which I think cherry is pretty standard with most bourbons, but certainly Maker's Mark, that is another uh, standard flavor expression of their profiles uh, throughout, you know, Maker's Mark and on up to, to the others in, in that series. Like cinnamon bun with the raisins and the bready notes and vanilla icing. There's like raisins, so some dried fruit too. It's very fruity, actually, very fruit forward. Uh, pear, yeah, I get pear. I get a little citrus zest in there. I get the orchard fruits, like the, the red fruits uh, mentioned earlier. Yeah, definitely, definitely raisin as well. Yeah, so this is, of my recollection, a lot tamer than the FAE-01. The FAE-01 was very, again, very dense and tobacco, uh, like to like a cigar box almost where it just had that, that woodiness and, and that heft to it uh, on the nose that was uh, enjoyable, but maybe not for everyone. This is more standard, pleasant, down-home plate bourbon. Mango? Really interesting. Not citrus fruit, tropical fruit. I mean, is citrus tropical fruit? And probably not because it grows in North Florida. Um, yeah, this is almost like a... Like a papaya or mango i don't know how to describe it it's interesting uh, very fruity nose so it's a pleasant nose nice sweet uh a lot going on but all very in the sweet fruit forward realm all right on the taste okay initial instant thought the palate comes off as kind of thin in the first like quarter to third of it 
and then it explodes with flavor. So like my very first thought was like, this is kind of disappointing as I'm absorbing it all. And then uh, all of a sudden it's this cacophony of fruit and v- vanilla. I think I used cacophony correctly. A cornucopia, maybe? That makes sense because there's fruit in it. It's a cornucopia of flavor. It, it has got caramel, it's got vanilla icing, got a little bit of, of baking spice as well. Nice spiciness, but I'll tell you what, the finish on it, doesn't last a, a, a super long time, but it is an explosion as it gets to the finish. Like it just, it kind of, the nose is nice, right? And it's going like this and standard, you know, above average bourbon for sure. And then the, the it goes down a little bit. It was expecting a little bit more at the proof and for bean makers marking with the stave profiles, but then boom, it just shoots uh, out of a cannon to get you to the finish. So uh, a lot of like nice toasted, uh, spicy kind of flavors here so i'm gonna try to delve into it a little bit more see what else we get oh i love the finish now i'm getting what they said about the mouth feel mouth feel um super creamy it doesn't fight you though it's not like this unpleasant super like viscosity and, and woody and and um it's not intense in a bad way it 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 explodes Hmm, how do I want to phrase this? Starts developing this classic Maker's Mark maple syrup, bready pancake vibe with strawberry, a little nuttiness. I think it's coming from the toast, almost like a roasted almond, brown sugar. The toastiness of this from the from the toasted oak staves, I think really shows itself in the final act here, in the third act. So once you get to right before, so the end of the palette, so you're still getting some of the flavor and then the finish. Again, the finish doesn't linger like a super long time, probably six, seven seconds. Like it's standard. It's an above average finish. It's not thin by any means. But really, oh man, that mouth feel, mouth feel is exquisite. It's perfect profoundly unique to uh i get compliments this maker's mark profile well again this does all the maker's mark things that you love maple syrup pancake a little buttery a little just very kind of it's a weeder so a very bread forward uh, flavor profile like sweet bread brown sugar a little red apple and and cherry which was on the nose Uh, but then it just it gives it it's like if you took it and turned it into an old person hard candy uh, and you just kind of would, you know, like a Werther's is just chilling in your mouth for a really long time. That's what this is like. It's not like a Werther's. It's like a super amped up, complex Werther's in a glass that then is put in your mouth. And it's delicious. Uh, this is really good. I think this is more approachable and accessible from a flavor profile than the FAE01. I really like the FAE01. I think we should do a head to head at some point. Uh, but the FAO2, I think, is better. It's really good. Really, 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 really good. And I think it's going to be received better by more people. It's going to be more down home plate of what bourbon is, just Maker's Mark vibe to it. And then the lingering mouth feel. Mouth feel is really going to, uh, I think, give this a lot of praise, is what I'm going to imagine. So. If you see this out there at about 70, I got this at 70. It was shy of 80. It was like 78 bucks pre-tax. A little bit more than I think it should be at MSRP, but like I don't have any buyers for more. So this was a really nice special bottle. It's what you would expect for a limited release. It is in the Maker's Mark profile. Uh, It just twisted a little bit, which is what a limited edition, limited release should be. So uh, on our scale of ABC, D or F or S. I don't think this is superior. I'm going to give this an A minus. This is really good. If it was available all the time and, you know, closer to 50 bucks and it would be an S and it would be superior. But for a limited, re- limited release edition, I keep wanting to try to combine those two words. This is very nice, approachable, accessible, complex though. And um, in a classic maker's mark kind of way, just a little different. So for Bourbon on a Budget, I'm Brendan. A minus, Makers, Mark, F-A-E-O-2, 
2021 limited release. Mouthfeel. 